Elena, good to see you. Thanks for coming in. So why is your fund doing well? Well, um, we have a systematic approach to fund management. In the last few years, risk management has become paramount in controlling the very diverse world events that are taking place within the systems. Mm. And uh, we have done a lot of development work on our models and systems to be able to deliver this result. Yeah, and you mentioned diverse world events. Tell me a little bit more about what you mean by that and how you have had to adapt your system to what's been happening. Well, sovereign risk uh, has been uh, one of the main drivers of the volatility we have experienced. And the risk of default uh, has been addressed within the markets. Uh, we had not seen before, uh, to such an extent, the risk uh, arise of, of sovereign uh, default within developed economies and within uh, the main blocks of Europe. So this has uh, created uh, uncertainty. Uh, you can benefit from that uncertainty, but if you're not careful, of course, you're going to expose yourself to risk. And, yeah. how, how do you benefit from the volatility and the uncertainty that we've had over the past few months and probably that we will continue to have? Um, it, it is all a matter of a structured approach, so you do not have just one uh, model or even set of models, but you look at the whole global economy, the asset classes uh, that uh, are operating within that econ uh, within mm. the world. And so by having this uh, diverse uh, set of models, you're able to therefore find the opportunities where they exist and, and apply them profitably. And I'm just wondering then about distortions that we've had in the markets in asset classes. I'm thinking about quantitative easing, for example, stimulus and how that's affected currencies. You keep hearing about sort of this global currency debasement, if you like. Has that complicated your job to an extent? Yes, it makes it harder. And there are times when uh, the risk is, uh, is so high that you have to take uh, extraordinary risk management measures. Mm. Uh, yes, it has been a very difficult year. And your fund is doing particularly well, despite that, you know, compared to your competitors, just hearing some of the figures there from Man Group's AHL fund. I'm just wondering, are you, in general, perhaps not when you, you look at, at your company, but the industry at large, are you more optimistic now than you were, say, a few years ago in 2009? Um, are you talking about profitability? Yes. Well, we have structured our models to reflect a long-term opportunity for profit. So in any one year, even though you might see uh, great difficulties, um, we look at the, our strategies for long-term performance. And this is what we offer investors. We offer them portfolio construction and the consistency and reliability of the strategies for the long term within their investment horizon, within their investment portfolios as well. But just to go back to that point about dislocations or distortions in the market, and there is talk that we could see further quantitative easing perhaps in Europe, the UK, in the States. I'm just wondering how, how difficult that might make your job or, or, or just, you know, because of the way that it affects people, the way people invest in bonds and currencies, how do those sort of dislocations affect you? Well, they, they affect the, the models and uh, because we have uh, shorter term models, medium term models, long term models, so we are looking at all the factors that are driving the particular asset classes. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we have to make sure that our models continue to work and that they have the correct allocation within the whole set of models we are employing. So. And of course, as part of your model, you have data sales that, that go back for years and years. But part of the problem that we have now with the onset of the financial crisis and the way governments and central banks have, have been dealing with it is that you have things going on now that have never happened before or weren't happening a few years ago. Yes. Well, this will always happen. Yeah. This is uh, the nature of the financial markets. We are in a dynamic global economy. And so we cannot uh, explain everything with the information from the past. But if we structure our strategies correctly, then we have sufficient control and management within them to be able to absorb the new information, incorporate it within the models and the systems, and therefore deliver a good result going forward. Because it's about what we do going forward and what, being better prepared yeah, next time. Being better prepared next time, and yes. particularly at a time where many people say the level of risk is rising in this region. So yes. what about 
How concerned are you about unexpected events? I'm thinking about a potential default. Well, um, this is a, a separate issue that uh, needs to be discussed as to its probability and as to its uh, total outcome within the financial mm. markets. And we can do that if, if you like. Um, but uh, yeah, risk at that time would be extremely high and uh, we would have to be very careful how we manage within that. How difficult would it be to deal with that level of risk because you know, there are a lot of people saying that once grief, Greece goes, if it goes, that it would have a knock-on effect to uh, Portugal, Ireland, Italy, Spain. Uh, that was certainly the view of my last guest from Fathom Financial Consulting. Do you think that we could potentially see a Lehman style scenario where credit markets essentially freeze and the system unravels or is that a, a huge exaggeration to your mind? Um, I think it could be worse but I think we have to be careful to work so that we do not arrive at that place and um, in particular um, if you want to speak about the euro or any exit from the euro and the effects of that, we can discuss that. It depends. We have to be a bit more specific rather than sort of say. So what are the, big, what are the specific questions in your mind or the specific concerns? Well, with regard to Greece, which is at the forefront of uh, everybody watching what, what will happen within Europe, um, I think that an exit from, Europe, from the euro would have catastrophic consequences because uh, any devaluation of the drachma, of, the, of going back into drachma would cause raw materials to be more expensive or the imports would be more expensive. Um, so uh, all of a sudden uh, the Greek debt would be much greater than actually it is at the moment. Um, it took a whole year and more to enter Greece into the euro and if we talk about um, an exit from the euro, it would happen overnight with people trying to remove uh, more cash balances out of banks. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, therefore, uh, you know, all that would have a knock-on effect to, to the rest of the situation in, in Europe. So, therefore, we have to consider that the euro as a currency stays together and continues to support all the economies that are within, within it at the moment, all the countries that are within it at the moment. Um, then we can analyze the situation from what is happening in Greece from the point of view mm. of control and government and results uh, that are needed by the Troika to continue their lending process. And if you like, yeah. we can discuss that. Well, you know what, there are certainly a number of serious challenges ahead, aren't there? And we'd love to have you in again and we'll, uh, we'll talk some more. But thank you very much for now, uh, Elena Ambrosiado, CEO of ICOS. Good to have you. Thank you.